Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in North Row. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. Uh, my day job, I'm an elder law attorney at uh, Myrick O'Connell. We're right in uh, over the border in uh, um, Westboro. But this is not about my day job. It's about my friends, Frank and Mary. If you've been to one of my presentations, you've seen Frank and Mary. You know that their goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that means North Row, that means they never want to leave. They want to stay right here. And so your question, if you're like Frank and Mary, is who? what do you need to know about? What programs do you need to know about? And who do you need to know in order to just be able to stay here for the rest of your life? So I've got this like great co-host, Liz Tridiak, who has now become like a person who knows a ton of people in, in uh, North Bros. And she moved to become the, the, uh, the uh, director at the Council on Aging. Oh, my God, Liz, has it been like six months, six, six? Something months? like that. Yeah, April 6th, I think it you was. Know, you know, does time really fly when you're having fun? You know, it sure does. <laughs> <laughs> and so and so what Liz has done is she's in charge of finding all of these great guests that that appear on this show. And Liz has got some great guests here today. Let us whom have we got here today? Well, I am so excited that we have Kristen Black, who is Northborough's new uh, health agent. And we have Becca Meekins here, who is our brand new assistant town manager. And or administrator. Um, I'm so excited to have both of you on board here. Uh, over the past few months during COVID, we had some department heads uh, leave their positions, get positions closer to home for them. So we had some vacancies for a little bit, but we, I think the town really took its time to find really, really stellar candidates. And I couldn't be more excited to have you both on board. So I just wanted to introduce them to everyone um, who watches the show and get to know you each a little bit. Um, I think I'd, if it's okay, I'd like to start with Becca Meekins, who, um, Becca, when did you start? Uh, I, I believe this is the beginning of my fourth week. So Fourth week. Yeah. Wow. I know. You're I'm pro. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Liz is so old compared. To, Liz has been here forever. Yeah, like five to me, times yes. longer than you. My God. Yeah. So Becca, how did you um, get to where you are today? Tell us a little bit about your background, um, what you're most interested in, what you're passionate about, and what you want to focus on here in Northboro. Yeah. So uh, let's see. Um, I have my master's in public administration. So um, this is the field that I studied to be in and, um, you know, that I want to be in local government, uh, something I'm really passionate about. Um, prior to coming to Northboro, I was the assistant town administrator in the town of Grafton, so close by, um, and I was there for about four years. Um, and then before that, I worked in, uh, you know, a few other communities in the state of Massachusetts, Weston, Newton. Um, so you know, I, I have a, a somewhat diverse background when it comes to, you know, public administration. Um, and, you know, what attracted me to Northboro was, you know, I, I want to, because this is the field I want to be in, I do want to be a town manager, a town administrator someday. Um, you know, I, I'm being able to diversify my experience and just learn about a new community and the needs of a new community and how to meet those needs. Um, it's just really important. So, you know, and not only that, but Northboro as a community has a, a fantastic reputation, um, you know, and it's surrounding Kino Park. So it felt like good timing. Um, and, uh, you know, I've heard nothing but great things about the staff here. And I've learned that um, everything I heard is without a doubt true. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, to the future and, you know, starting to tackle some of the challenges and, you know, issues that face Northboro. Great. So if, so I'm sure right now you're incredibly busy um, helping the town and helping um, other department heads with COVID related things, but if COVID wasn't happening right now, what, what's your passion? What's, what do you really love to work on in local government? Yeah. So, um, you know, getting into this field, <laughs> It's funny because I, I, I get a lot of questions about my age um, and, and I, 
you know, often am one of the younger people in the room, um, particularly when it comes to local government. Um, you know, not a lot of my social counterparts in my private life, not a lot of them know about local government or what it means to serve in local government or, you know, what a town assessor does or a health agent. They just have no, you know, they're just not tuned into it. So, you know, one of the things that I'm really, really passionate about is, um, you know, educating people, particularly young people, about the importance of local government um, and about the importance of being able to have a voice um, in your community um, in the place where you're, you know, m most present most of the time. Um, and so, you know, if COVID wasn't going on and we didn't have a whole host of other things that we have going on every day, I, I would be, you know, in the schools, I would be talking to young people, I'd be at colleges, I'd be trying to, to make this uh, career path, um, you know, more attractive. To, to people my age and younger, um, because I, I think it's important. Um, and there's a lot of value in having, you know, diverse voices um, from, from all age ranges, so. What a great, what a great thing. What a great thing. <laughs> I couldn't I mean, agree more. <laughs> to, yeah, to be really focusing on that community of people who, as, as she says, tend to not necessarily be feeling they're connected to, you know, you watch the national news and you do all that stuff. But to be really appreciating, because this is where all the power is, you know, it's really at the local level, right? And mm -hmm. it's crazy. that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Wow, that's really Arthur summed it up for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm gonna hop over for a second to Kristen Black, our new health agent, and just ask you the same question: How did you end up where you are today? So um, I have a fairly diverse background. Um, I completed my um, undergrad at UMass studying environmental science, and I went on, um, did a master's and a PhD at Penn State Environmental Studies as well. Um, I moved on to state government, and I actually worked for the Division of Fisheries and Wildlife up on Rabbit Hill Road in Westbrow. Some of you may have hiked up there before. Um, and then I moved over to the town of Uxbridge and um, really enjoyed working for the health department there for the last five years. Um, I grew up in a small town, and I really enjoyed Uxbridge. Uxbridge has around 14,000, um, so pretty similar to Northborough, um, and really enjoyed um, advancing several initiatives with that program and over the last six months um, managing COVID there. So it's quite an adventure, um, but I did choose to move over to Northborough, similar to Becca's comments, um, it has a great reputation and um, good management and um, stability. And I really heard it was a great team of department heads to work with. And so five years into Uxbridge, it felt like it was a great time to you know, meet the challenges of a new community and um, to start some things here. So I'm really excited to be in town. And it's a little closer to home. So I, you know, I've always grown up in Shopton, know Northborough pretty well. So it, it feels very familiar. Well, welcome. We're so excited to have you here. Um, so COVID is happening and I'm sure that takes up most of every hour of your work week. <laughs> so what specifically with COVID are you working on right now, Kristen? Um, I have a great working relationship learning all about the schools um, and how they've responded with their reopening plans. Also trying to support local businesses and respond to complaints, um, you know, where people may call concern that someone's not wearing a mask. So, or if you see anything else that makes you feel unsafe, really, the health department um, is responsible for enforcement of COVID policies. Um, we're also here to answer questions for residents if they find out that maybe they were with someone who was positive for COVID or a grandchild or, um, you know, those types of questions really talk through um, different scenarios and to figure out if quarantine or is necessary or testing is necessary. So I work very closely with our local public health nurse Anne Labonte, which many of you know, and the great news is I work with Anne for the last five years. She also supports um, Uxbridge, so Anne's a familiar face, and I really enjoy working with her. Um, so a lot of the day-to-day -day on COVID is, yeah, business compliance, questions from the public, and really, most importantly, supporting our schools um, and help them stay healthy and safe and open. That's great. And Kristen also recently helped me um, arrange the flu clinic that we have coming up specifically for seniors. 
on November 6th here at the Senior Center. Uh, Wegmans Pharmacy is helping us put that on. They have a version of Senior High Dose, and that's from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. on Friday, November 6th. So I just wanted to throw that out there for anyone who needs their flu shot still, because it's going to be really important to have that this year. So can I just ask ask Kristen a question? I just I I know I once again. So all of my clients are seniors, right? And and they're the folks that are most like me. I'm over. I turned seventy this year. The ones that are kind of most concerned about COVID, and so really appreciating what you're doing, dealing with the folks that they're dealing with. You're dealing with the dealing with the businesses, dealing with the stores, dealing with all that. So I'm just I'm just curious from and it's great that they see your face because they know there's somebody out there kind of looking out for them. I'm curious from your perspective. You mentioned those kinds of you know the dealing with the occasional complaint and you know people aren't wearing their masks. How are folks dealing with that? Both the customers and the store owners. I know that's been a long haul and there's always that tension between you know people want to do business but people want to stay safe. Have you seen it, you know, changing over, you know, over the last several months? And are people still kind of okay here? You know, you hear about weariness with masks and all this stuff. Just, just curious, because you'd see it. You're, you're right there, right? Right. You know, I've only today marks week two for me in my new role, oh. so I don't know how we've been doing. But the trends we've seen, you know, I saw in my previous community and overall, you know, people are getting used to the new norm, right? We keep hearing that phrase, so I think people are much more comfortable with masks. But you know, but then there's some people that are fatigued, right? And you're gonna, you know, there are some individuals that are a little tired and. Um, and they want to choose to exercise what they think is the right not to wear a mask. So I, I think part of coming to North Bro is we have a great community here that believes in science and wants to protect all of our residents, especially those who are higher risk. So um, I think we do have good compliance. But again, if people, um, you know, see something that makes them uncomfortable or they're not sure about a workplace safety standards being met, you know, we're here as a resource. And often it's just education. You know, sometimes people just need to be gently reminded. You know, we always have my approach to public health has always been, you know, we'll kill them with kindness and education, education. And so when we really explain to people while, you know, you think you're six feet away, but you're walking down a hallway, best practice is to keep the mask on. Most people are pretty agreeable. Sometimes they just get um, a little fatigued until someone gives them a gentle reminder. So you just try to approach with kindness. That's great. That's great. And I think I think everybody's OK with it as long as they feel like everyone else is OK with it, you know. Yeah. So those kinds of general reminders to that one person are really helping a whole bunch of other people too. So that's really, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Hmm. Now, Kristen, I wanted to ask you too, the same question I asked Becca, if we didn't have COVID going on, what are you passionate about? So uh, my background's more environmental. So I've always been really passionate about, you know, the environment in my previous community, we started a really large annual cleanup day event. Um, which was great. We involved Boy Scouts and nonprofit groups and senior centers, and everybody really came together for a large cleanup day where, you know, we picked up trash, we educated the public and, and made our, you know, um, took care of our community. So that's something hopefully when COVID eases up, we can maybe look to start some traditions in town. You've got a, a great team and DPW and, and they have some great programs already. So I hope to grow some of those prod, uh, programs. And even right now um, through COVID, I'm trying to work with our town manager's office to start a sharps disposal program. You may have some of your clients so, you know, um, either are maybe diabetic, they have needles that they need to dispose of, or even so many people have diabetic animals and, you know, people don't know what to do with syringes and they really shouldn't be going in the regular trash stream. So we're going to try to make a program that's easy for residents. So rather than just once a year dropping them off from the year wide, you know, clean up event, we're going to try to have a program uh, by appointment to, to help residents dispose of sharps. So that's another mm -hmm. initiative. So what is best practice right now if you if we don't have the sharps disposal? What what's recommended for a resident? Um, well, we have a long list right now of residents that have been sort of waiting. So in the past, we do that once a year um, pick up op or drop off option um, that would take place. Some um, pharmacies have a mail back program where you can actually put the sharps in an approved container in sort of a labeled box 
um, and mail it back that way. Um, so those are sort of our options right now. Most communities do have service program, but they typically will only accept them for the residents. So for that reason, that's where it's been um, a little difficult. Um, so I did want to give kudos to you both because I, Becca, you've been here four weeks. Kristen, you've been here two weeks. And both of you have already been up here to the senior center, uh, made that a priority and have seen the building. So thank you for coming up here. Um, what what did you think when you came up here? Um, you know, you have a beautiful facility. Well, you, I should say, you know, the residents of Norfolk have a, a beautiful facility. Um, and, you know, I, I really, really wish that I could, could see it, you know, in all of its glory filled with people um, because I've, you know, I've heard only good things about the programs and um, the food, <laughs> which I really wish I could taste. Um, <laughs> So, you know, I, I'm looking forward to the day when, when this whole COVID mess is behind us and um, I can get up there and, and meet some people face to face and sit down and eat some good food. Um, but, you know, until then, um, it's a beautiful building. I love that you've moved programs to outdoors. I think that's fantastic. Um, giving people the ability to, to interact socially is you know, absolutely critical right now. Um, and that goes for everybody, seniors all the way down to kids. I mean, it's a, I keep telling people, I'm like, it's a, it's a difficult time to be alive right now. It's a, it's an odd time to be living in this world. Um, and we just have to do what we can to, you know, keep each other safe, but, you know, keep each other, you know, mentally and physically healthy as best we can. So. And, and Becca, you should you should really uh, uh, come appreciate the kind of the uniqueness of that senior center. And, I, and once again, you're not seeing it, as you say, in all its glory right now, because there aren't a jillion people there. Yeah. But there were always a jillion people there. And one of the things, you know, I do I do a lot of work in a lot of a lot of communities. So I go to a lot of senior centers. There is no place that has the 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 a level of vibrance that is there. And a lot of it really has to do with how they've grown the food piece, you know, so that people, so that it has become this wonderful place that you can just stop by and have a cup of coffee, that you can stop by and meet somebody. And I think especially, especially for seniors, there's a real, it usually develops a real sense of community, which is why I know it's so hard. It's so hard for the senior centers, for the, for, for, you know, for Liz now dealing with this, like they've got these wonderful groups, like the, the dull men. I loved the, I love that the dull, you should meet the dull men. They are like so not dull, you know, but, but they, it's, it's this wonderful group, but they would schedule their meetings to have these dull meetings. And then they'd schedule them so that they could have lunch there or that they would, you know, or meetings would be like, there'd be a breakfast thing and then they'd have their meeting, you know? So it has evolved into this wonderful world, which is like terrific. Mm -hmm. terrific. And nothing has stopped the dull men. They were out here last week with umbrellas in the parking lot, <laughs> in the rain. <laughs> probably 20 of them distanced with their masks, their hats and umbrellas, and they are still coming here. <laughs> they're, they're resilient. They are they're still resilient. going, going yeah. strong. So I, I would love to have both of you up here for some sort of meet and greet once we can rebound and get back open. Um, yeah. Like Becca said, it's been a challenge. It's been a challenging year and, um, both of you have coming in to a new job in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, it's it's difficult. <laughs> so we're so happy that you are here, though. So I have to ask Kristen. She she's an environmentalist. So have you done the have you done the Burroughs Loop yet? This wonderful walking trail. It, it's just great. No, I know. Once again, it was really kind of driven by the a lot of volunteers in Northboro, right? And and it's I want to say twenty miles long, right? Wow. And it connects all four the four boroughs communities, and it's just it's it's terrific. And I just now I just want to mention now this is this is real. I'm, I'm a walking. I'm one of those fans for doing that kind of stuff. So for folks who are watching, right? If you're Frank and Mary, you know, and you're being socially distanced, if you want to see probably the prettiest place in those four communities, go to the place where Kristen used to work. There, there's a there's the Fisheries and Wildlife Building in Westboro, which is right off of, of 135 as you're heading to Westboro, right? Go to that building and then go to the back. 
and there are there is a there is a view there like right now right until the end that will just knock your socks off it's the prettiest thing there are two benches there there were like park benches for employees there who are the luckiest people in the world to have lunch at those benches but now a lot of them aren't around because of covid right so you can actually go and see that it's just stunning and you know it isn't in northbrook but you get to see northbrook right because you're looking back at northbrook it's just a great just a piece of trivia People aren't aware of that. It should, isn't it great? Right? It's beautiful. Yeah. It's just stun stunning, stunning. Just wondering. All right. Well, um, any parting words from our guests here? We're running out of time. No, I just thank you, everyone. It's been a great welcome. And, you know, like Becca mentioned, uh, I was really blown away with the senior center. And I said, I think I might retire in Northboro. This is awesome. I really, you know, I went to the fireplace and I said, now this is over the top. Like, I don't know how you pulled this one off, but uh, I, it's, uh, I really look forward to um, getting to know um, everyone in the community and, and making some new connections. So um, don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions for the health department. We're very excited to be fully staffed after a, a staff absence of six months. So if anyone called and didn't get a response, please try again. We're here. We're um, ready to help you and hope everybody stays um, healthy and safe through Halloween and the upcoming holidays. So thanks again for the invitation. Oh, and if they need to reach you, what is your number again? Okay, 508. I'm going to look to the side <laughs> here. 508-393-5009. That's great. That's great. And Becca, how do people reach you if they want to reach out and say hi? Or ask yeah, a question? So, um, you can always reach out on the website. You can send me an email. Um, or you can call my number in the town administrator's office, 508-393-5, I'm looking to the side too, because I've <laughs> almost got it memorized, um, 508-393-5041. So, we're always it's like, here. It's like the whole community is just composed of all you young, dynamic people. I feel like such an old person in this show, right? <laughs> so to you folks watching, Frank and Mary, these people are just there to help you. They, you know, Absolutely. it's just... It's just terrific. It's just terrific. Well, Liz, I really want to thank you for putting these together. Once again, Liz keeps getting these great people to come on, right? And thank you both for, for coming. And folks, if you're watching, so take advantage of this. This is a good time to be getting to know some of these people. Your regular routine has been interrupted, you know? So just kind of, you know, give them a call. If you got any questions, just so that you see the tremendous people who are actually, these are your tax dollars at work. You know, these are, you know, these aren't these kind of, you know, faceless, snarky administrator. They look <laughs> all pretty friendly, you know? So, you know, just talk, just talk to them. Liz, thank you very much. Thanks, Arthur. This has been thank, fun. Thank you. Thank you all. And folks, we'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Northboro. Thank you. Thank you.